Man, I figured I would just do this video because I just got to do it. Even though I'm driving through the literal wilderness in the dark right now. And um, it's about the market. It's about, obviously, it's about the market and the crash. But it's not really a crash. It's just like a further dissension down. Um, so, Bitcoin, like all assets right now, is tanking and it's largely due to the federal reserve rate hikes um the thing to understand about these things is that this is this is kind of the event that we've been talking about for the past seven eight ten months year year and a half where if the fed reverses its, its fiscal policy and starts to increase interest rates it would cause equities markets which is stocks and commodities it would it would um, cause equities markets to crash and if the equities markets crash Bitcoin is not safe from that just yet okay um, now here's the important thing to note okay it's extremely important that you understand this this does not change Bitcoin's fundamentals it is still the most decentralized database the most secure database the most secure payment system on the planet you know if you're if your main uh, gripe against Bitcoin if the, if the bad thing you have to say about it is that the price is down then I think that you're still quite immature in your understanding of Bitcoin and why you're investing in it you know if you're investing in it for a quick flip you know these things happen where it dumps it also goes up crazy too, but it also dumps. You know what I mean? And so, you know, these things happen and it's, it's just the nature of the beast. But um, if you're investing in it because you know that it is going to be the world reserve currency of the future and that, you know, nations are adopting it as legal tender now, nations are looking to it as an exit strategy from the US dollar, as a hedge against the you know, fiscal uh, policies of the Federal Reserve, you know, the, the IMF, uh, the World Bank, you know, these things, then you're in it for a little bit of a different reason. And to see equities markets tank right now, the Fed's adjusting uh, interest rates higher than they have since 1994 or the same anyway um you know and then the market reacting the way it does if you're looking at this as like oh bitcoin's dead because of the price because it's just the price okay if you're looking at it as bitcoin's dead because of the price then maybe you're not seeing the big picture here you know um what what we're actually seeing is the reset of these markets number one but also number two the uh, you know, the revelation of just how fragile this economy is in terms of, you know, monetary policy and how that is impacting the way people do business, right? So it's important to get that. It's like, that's a really big thing to understand that there is, this is a macro event. This isn't isolated to just Bitcoin. Google's down 60%. Tesla's down like 65%. Uh, Apple's down like 40%. You know, these are, everything's getting a hit. Everything's taking a hit. Everything's getting hurt right now. Um, this is like, this is like a, 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 a market wide, a markets wide, you know, type of event that occurred. So it's important to like really like drill that down get that in your head that this is something that is is not isolated to just bitcoin crypto you know that kind of thing now once you get over that that this is a market reset once you get over that just remember a few things one is that bitcoin recovers faster than most other markets do all right bitcoin recovers much faster than most other markets do um that's number one. Number two is that you're investing in a technology that is being adopted like 
or at the time of adoption, at the time you're investing in it, it's at the time where adoption is probably at one of its lowest levels. You know what I mean? We're, we're, we're under 5% of the world knowing and, and, and uh, interacting with Bitcoin on a regular basis, right? That means that the potential growth of this industry, of the adoption of this industry, of this, of this technology is ridiculously vast, right? Like, like you're on a lopsided supply-demand ratio because the demand hasn't hit yet and the supply is finite, right? When you can understand a few of these concepts, then you, and, and if you weren't going to sell, if, the, if Bitcoin's price was high right now, you, if you weren't going to sell then, right, then when Bitcoin's price is low, you shouldn't sell and you should actually buy more. Uh, you know, a person who doesn't really understand the concept thinks, why would I buy when the price is so low? And I want you to think about that phrase. Why would I buy when the price is so low? Why would I do it when the price has dropped so much? Teddy, why would I buy then? I want you to think about that phrase. And then the, the, the opposite phrase is, why should I buy when the price is high? Or I should buy when the price is high. I should wait till Bitcoin's at 70,000 again to buy. The majority of the markets do this. The majority of people investing wait till Bitcoin is really high and then they buy it. Man, a lot of people I know. I've been telling them since Bitcoin was 4,000, 5,000, 8,000, 7,000, 10,000. I've been telling them and they don't listen. And then Bitcoin hits 25, 30, 35. That's when they buy. Yo, that's crazy to me. That is so crazy to me, but that's what they do. That's what these markets do. They buy at those times. You know what I'm saying? They buy when the when the prices are high. The prices are super high. Uh, they don't buy when it's low because they're too scared to buy when it's low. Because they think, oh, it's low, so it's going to go lower, so that's why I shouldn't buy. But if you're playing a long game with Bitcoin, if you're playing a long-term game, like, you know, if you're playing a couple years, a year, you know what I mean? For, and remember, nobody's ever lost money investing in Bitcoin in a four-year period. Like buying it and waiting four years, you've never lost money. Nobody. Even people who bought it 20000 back when, back in 2017, they made money four years later to the day. You know what I mean? They were up. And so, you know, why, you know, I don't know what to tell you, man. I don't know what to tell you. This is just yet another time period where Bitcoin and Bit, look, I remember when Bitcoin was a thousand bucks, 2017, early 2017, it was a thousand dollars. You know what I'm saying? I remember the majority of the time that I've been in crypto, Bitcoin has been under twenty thousand. The majority of the time that I've been in crypto, it's been under twenty thousand. You know what I'm saying? And then it went up to seventy thousand, sixty nine, and then it crashed now to twenty thousand. Like, dude, what? It crashed to 20,000. Think about that, man. Think about like somebody like me who saw it at 1,000 and now hearing four years later, five years later, you know, it crashed to 20,000. This is like, this is what becomes normal. People, who, people who've been in it longer than me, this is what becomes normal. People thought, people said, oh, I'm going to get out of this dumpster fire. It's way too high at $300. Okay, they got out at three hundred dollars. I had a cousin of mine. He sold Bitcoin at ten thousand because he said, "Man, it's it's just way too high. That's got to be it. It's over. It's going to come crashing down." Then it doubled from there. You know what I'm saying? And now we're looking at sixty thousand dollar Bitcoin, or or we were looking at a sixty thousand dollar Bitcoin. Now it's crashed to twenty thousand. I want you to think about this, man. Think about this, and think about how it's new technology still. This is brand new technology. It's never more, never been, never before existed, and it's coming at a time where you can't rely on the current world reserve currency. Then couple that with we have this thing called the internet, and the internet needs money. It needs a, a money, a, a money that's native to the internet, a money that exists on the internet order for commerce to, to continue because most of the commerce we do is done globally through some kind of wireless communication system 
You know what I mean? That transfers payments. That's what Bitcoin is. Except nobody controls it. It doesn't get hacked. Nobody can reverse transactions. Nobody can garnish anything. It's extremely secure. Most secure database that's ever existed, dude. Come on now. You know what I'm saying? And so this is this is what I'm saying, man. Like, look, I get it. I've been in your shoes. I watched when I watched Bitcoin go all the way up to twenty thousand, and I watched it come all the way down to three thousand. You know what I mean? And it hurt, and it, and it took a year, and it was tough, and it was brutal, and it hurt coming down to three thousand. It hurt real bad. But then, but then, but then, that also provided me with uh, the best buying opportunity to get in as much the most Bitcoin that I ever got. You know what I mean? And then Bitcoin goes to sixty nine thousand. Dude, I I can't I can't be mad at that. And we're, look, it's got to happen at some point, right? Like for me, here, all right, right, so enough of, um, you know, enough talking about perspective, okay? Let's talk about price, right? Um, I think Bitcoin has to go under 20,000 because everybody's expecting it to go under 20,000. Maybe it does the opposite, where everybody's expecting it to go under 20K and it doesn't, I don't know. But I'm pretty sure you have a ton of people with sell orders at 20K. And then you have a bunch of people with sell orders at 19 or 17. You know what I mean? 15, right? It could go really low. But remember, how long can it really stay there for, right? When it went to uh, 3,000 or 3,500, I think it was there for like five weeks. And then it went up and it was at, and it was at 45 or 4,800. And then, you know, it never touched 3,000 again until Black Thursday, which every market just dumped all the way out because that was when the entire world shut down and uh you know bitcoin literally halved and it came down to 3500 and then it came back up to 55 that same day and that's what we're looking for a bounce like this whoop, a bounce it's gonna wick down whoop, fill a bunch of lucky blessed buy orders at low prices and then whoop, it's got to pick back up and then level out and then from there like once you see that little V thing and it's and then it stabilizes at a price higher than the V, that's when you're gonna get a lot of people, um, a lot of traders starting to regain confidence that all right, we've bottomed. You know, this is it. We're coming back up. But remember, we're at a time where there's a ton of political uncertainty. We're we're in unprecedented times, except for the times where great empires end come to an end okay you know what i mean i know it's tough to hear but we we have to be realistic here a lot of really bad decisions have been willingly made repeatedly for for many years there were many opportunities for outs you know what i mean bitcoin shouldn't exist because we should be able to use the dollar effectively we should paypal shouldn't exist cash app shouldn't exist you know Venmo shouldn't exist. How is it that banks can't talk to each other so that I can't I can't send money from my account to somebody else's account just by putting in a username? What, what is that? How, how come that how come that's like that? You know what I mean? The money's already wireless. It's already digital. I use my app to look in the bank account, right? And you know, there's many reasons. A lot of it boils down to uh, corruption. A lot of it boils down to uh, ignorance and you know, an unwillingness to innovate, an unwillingness to embrace, you know, the things that benefit the consumer. And that's been going on for a long time. You got to be honest. And, and that's at the fiscal policy level, the monetary policy level. That's been going on. And it's just, it's been a culture that trickles down into everything else. And so, you know, now comes Bitcoin, which doesn't have any of those problems. All wars have been funded by printing money. All programs, all, you know, most public contracts are funded by printing the money. You know, the Federal Reserve prints the money, gives it to the feds. The feds then uh, give grants and and whatnot and stipends to municipalities and stuff. You know, there's all kind of stuff going on like that. It all comes from printing money. It doesn't come from being fiscally responsible. You know what I'm saying? There's a whole culture of nonprofits of governmental agencies that need to frivolously spend money because they are uh, penalized 
for being fiscally responsible and saving money. They're penalized. And if they don't use it, they lose it. They don't get reimbursed that same amount. They're not, they're not eligible to ask for more the next year, right? It's like, this is policy. This is policy. We're, you know, all right, so for Jerome Powell, he hikes the, fr- the rates uh, 0.5%, and then now he's at 0.75%, the highest that rate, rate hike has hit since 1994. Okay, he does that. Um, what's that going to do to an inflation rate that's in the 20th percentile? If inflation is at 20%, you know what I mean? What's, what's 0.75% going to do? Let's say we just stick to the number that they BS us with, and it's absolute BS, but it's 8.5%, right? It's all, every time they announced it, it was higher than their prediction that they said it was going to be. They're prepping us for the real number of inflation. And they supposedly had stopped printing money. You know what I mean? And it's still higher. Okay, so, uh, you know, let's say it's 8.5%. What, what does 0.75% interest rate hikes do to an 8.5% inflation. And that's just this year. And we're not even done with this year. It's probably going to be higher by the year's end. But w- what happens next year? What do you do? What's that going to be like next year? Huh? You know what I mean? And so, okay, today, June 2022, the market is dumping. People are panicking. I'm sure you are too. You're like, oh my gosh, this is so crazy. Still, what do you turn to? What do you turn to? Are you going to place a bet that the American economy is going to dig its way out with 0.75% interest rate, side, interest rate hikes? Are you going to make a bet that the nations around the world doing trade with each other are going to continue to use the heavily inflated U.S. dollar? Huh? That's the bet you're going to make? Or, or... Do you recognize that other countries are already, already adopting Bitcoin, putting language into legislation that allows them to use Bitcoin as legal tender? Already, already. You know what I mean? Look, man, it's up to you. You decide. I don't know why everybody goes for dollars when, you know, the markets are like you know experiencing turmoil. Why go for dollars? I could see if you, you if you want to save the dollars so you could buy something, you know, to flip or whatever, like Bitcoin or whatever. But you know, if you're looking for the long haul, if you're gonna hold anyway, you're just gonna hold it. Man, I don't know, man. I don't know. I wouldn't. I, I just don't have much faith left in this system. And as they go on making decisions, announcing new policies, it just further cements my position. It further reinforces the, the, the position I have, which is that things are going to be different this time, this time around. Like, there's going to be a new thing, and people are going to have to deal with it. That's what it is. So, you know, I hope this... I don't know if it gave you comfort or not. <laughs> Because I'm talking about, you know, the potential collapse of the U.S. dollar uh, and, and the market collapse of today of commodities and crypto, you know. But it is what it is. And so, uh, you know, I don't know what to tell you. Go make more money. Find a way. Find a way to make more money. Look, everybody's in trouble. Everybody's in trouble. Your pension is in trouble. Everything's in trouble. Everything. Find a way to make money. You got to figure it out, man. Everybody has to figure it out. Find a way to make bread. So that you can buy some more coin. So that when this time passes. I remember 2020, March 2020. Black Thursday. The Bitcoin halving was in May. So two months later. You know what everybody was saying? Oh, is this the Bitcoin halving you were talking about? (laughs) Because Bitcoin literally halved in price. It dropped in half in price in one day. Not over the course of, you know, months, but in one day. Dude, my heart and my stomach and my privates occupied the same place. You know what I mean? That's how I felt. So I get it. I understand how you feel. But it passed, man. It passed. 
And then, because the market corrected, because the weak hands were shook out, because new entry points were ripe for the taking, okay? What did what happened, man? There was an increase at 30%, super quick. Then it was a doubling. Then it was, uh, what's it called? 500% increase over the next like six months. You know what I mean? Come on now. Come on now. And from the time of, you know, from, from Black Thursday, March 2020, Bitcoin is up 600% from there to these prices, you know? And that was a crash. That was a crash, and they're calling this a crash now. You know, you got to put things in perspective. Please, please, please. Look at the big picture. Every time you think things are going bad, man, zoom out really far. Zoom out a lot. You know what I mean? So, yeah, man, nothing has changed in terms of the technology. Absolutely nothing has changed for technology. Nothing, dude. Absolutely nothing. And so that's why you should still continue to invest in it. It's the same thing you've been looking at for the past 12 years. It's the same. And there's upgrades on the way, and there's new technology, and there's new players in the game, and there's new governments, you know, uh, adopting it. I don't know what to tell you, man. I don't know what to tell you, except everything I just said. So, yeah, man, that's my two cents. I hope that this message at least gives you some kind of comfort. I hope. If not, it's okay, too. You know what I mean? Um, and, you know, holl at me if you need any uh, encouragement. This is not financial advice, but just hit me up. You know what I mean? All right, man. Love you. Be safe.